Today, we're learning more about a shooting that left one man dead near a Spokane McDonald's. Right now, still unclear what happened. Plus, we are still waiting on the results of the Iowa caucus, and we'll tell you what caused a big delay and, of course, one of the first really big events of the election year. Plus, it is dry as we start off the noon hour, but there is going to be quite a change coming our way. Snow builds as we head toward your evening commute. We'll talk about how much snow to expect by tomorrow night. Hi, everyone. That's right. It's coming back. Do, 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 do. Hi everyone, welcome to Crime 2 News at Noon. I'm Laura Papetti. And I'm Jen York. It's pretty scary for some of us mm -hmm. that there's more snow in the future, but winter weather is making a comeback in the inland northwest. Snow is set to arrive just in time for the evening commute. Evan Arani is standing by in the Weather Center. Evan, what can we expect? Yeah, so we've been talking about this all morning long. What's in store as the day goes on? And of course, what's in store for your Wednesday for tomorrow mainly because this is going to come predominantly as an overnight event. Now, temperatures are still sub freezing in most of eastern Washington and North Idaho. Unfortunately, because of how cold it will be today, we will not see much of this come in the form of rain. You can see in Wenatchee right now, 27 degrees, 28 in Spokane, 33 in Ritzville and 31 down in Pullman. Pullman is expected to be hit pretty hard tonight into tomorrow morning with six to eight inches possible and three to four inches expected in the Spokane area. What you see on the 12 hour forecast shows how our chances of snow steadily increase throughout the day. So we start off just around 3 p.m. with a 30% chance of snow. Notice how that jumps up to 70% by 1 a.m. We're expecting light accumulations, almost minimal accumulations between about now and midnight. After midnight is when we see that activity really amp up and you can see that in reflection on the 12 hour forecast just past about the midnight uh, time frame on satellite radar. We do see that snow already building across eastern Washington uh, it began over on the west side of the state and pushed uh, just from about the northwest. That low pressure system now taking its shape as opposed to high pressure, which has kept us dry over the last several days. You could already see how some of those snow clouds, those darker snow clouds are building across the central uh, Washington area and that light Lighter, more vibrant white color is where we see that snow really actively coming down. So coming up, we will take a look at what's in store for the next several hours and how much to expect by tomorrow morning. Again, estimates for Spokane are at about three to four inches by the time we get through about tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk about what's to come around the region as a whole in just a bit. Back to you guys. Evan, thank you. The suspect in a South Hill murder case is being held on a $1 million bond. Last week, investigators say he strangled his ex-wife and then set her body on fire inside a car. On Friday night, court documents show that he does have a history of domestic violence, allegedly threatening to kill his ex-wife and another woman. The victim's friends and former co-workers say she expressed concerns for her safety at the time. Now here's what we know about the case so far. It started Thursday night when a Spokane police officer reported seeing someone in a car near 27th and Fisk. They say that just 20 minutes later, a passerby reported the same white 2004 Toyota Prius was on fire. Firefighters responded and found a woman's body in the car. You can read more about this case right now on Krem.com. And today we are learning the identity of the man shot and killed in Spokane's Hilliard neighborhood. It happened yesterday at a parking lot at a McDonald's. The Spokane County Medical Examiner identified the victim as 21 year old Christian Salazar. Police arrested Christian Robinson for second degree murder in connection with the shooting. Robinson has been denied bail. Two men are scheduled to appear in court today for their roles in a deadly Seattle shooting. Police arrested Marquis Tolbert and William Tolliver in Las Vegas. This was on Saturday morning. The shooting happened on January 22nd in Seattle and left one woman dead. Seven other people were injured in that shooting. The Seattle police chief says officers are working to extradite the men to Seattle. Until then, the two 24 year old suspects will appear in the Las Vegas court for a fugitive hearing and we'll continue to track that story. And a story that's making headlines across the nation mm -hmm. now and Idaho police say it has been five months since two children were seen alive. Their mother, Lori Vallow, and her new husband are in Hawaii. This is despite a court order for Vallow to prove her children are alive and well to an Idaho court. Now that has a lot of you asking why is Lori still in Hawaii and not mm -hmm. under arrest? Our sister station in Boise is sharing why that case is so complicated. Seven year old JJ Vallow and his sister, 17 year old Tylee Ryan, haven't been seen since September 2019. In January, Madison County served their mother, Lori Vallow, a civil court order in Kauai, Hawaii. 
That order stated she had five days to show her kids in Rexburg alive and well, which she did not do, putting her in contempt of court. The question now, can Lori be extradited back to Idaho? The simple answer is that extradition generally applies only to treason or felonies in our state. As a former Idaho Attorney General, David Leroy is familiar with extradition cases. To fail to obey a court order to produce the children is typically contempt of court of a civil nature and not a crime in Idaho. Uh, however, uh, the, there is a statute in Idaho that makes willful disobedience of a court order a potential misdemeanor. The Fugitive for Justice Act references that a person can be extradited for, quote, treason, felony, or other crimes. On that basis of other crimes, Leroy says prosecutors could potentially have a case. Typically, we extradite only on felonies, but Idaho law, a very broad and unusual reading, could allow that extradition on a misdemeanor. In his four years of the AG's office and as far back as he and the governor's office can remember, no one has ever been extradited to Idaho for a misdemeanor. It would be very atypical to see that happen. As for why an arrest warrant has not been issued, Leroy says he doesn't know the specifics of the case, but in Idaho, there must be probable cause that a crime was committed and enough evidence for a criminal charge to be filed. If there is such evidence and independent charges are filed, uh, then it becomes easier to extradite someone, but that's all speculation at this point. And obviously, were that an easy case to make, or if they already had the evidence, those charges probably would have been already filed. We will continue to track that story always on crim.com. In the meantime, the Senate impeachment trial is expected to wrap up tomorrow with a final vote. It would take 67 senators or two thirds of the Senate vote to convict President Trump, and he is facing two charges, obstruction of Congress and abuse of power. The Republicans hold the majority in the Senate. If convicted, the president will be kicked out of office, and that again is expected to happen tomorrow with the uh, trial wrapping up. And today there is no clear victor in the Iowa caucus. The Iowa Democratic Party found inconsistencies in reporting due to a coding issue. The problem appears to be centered around a mobile app. Results though are expected in about two hours. They wanted to go through and make sure the numbers were all yeah, adding up do it correctly. By hand. Mm -hmm. Now in the meantime, the focus will shift to New Hampshire and other early voting states. It was look for some updates this afternoon. Fascinating to watch last night. Yeah, and it's one of those, uh, they're using electronic voting and mm -hmm. of course some of the things that could go wrong in this case. Did go wrong. Yeah, so Apparently. they're working out the kinks here and hopefully we'll know a little bit later on today the results of that caucus. And certainly, we're tracking that in the newsroom mm -hmm. and we'll be posting that. All right, the cloud are starting to roll into the region. It is starting to look a little bit gray, maybe even a little wide outside. We're taking a live look right now. Evan is tracking the next snowstorm arriving just in a matter of hours. So hold on to your hat. We'll be right back.